I'm looking at a story this morning <clears throat> from The Hill that says um, your colleague, Congressman Ron Paul, the Republican from Texas, says he wants to introduce legislation to force an audit of the U.S. holdings of gold because he says, quote, it's a possibility that there might not actually be any gold in Fort Knox or the New York Reserve Bank. Is that nuts? Um, he's certainly welcome to go there and look. I don't know why we would have to have a bill. I'm I saw a gold sure. finger. There was, there, was, uh, there was gold in Fort Knox. Yeah, we sure have a lot of thieves out there trying to figure out their way to get in. Yeah. I don't know. And how could you have <laughs> you the don't want to disappoint them when they show up. For all the gold in Fort Knox. And then yeah. I, you know, I, there, <clears throat> he, uh, I do support an audit of the, of the Fed. I, I think it absolutely has to happen. Mm. The Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is where they go to print up money that doesn't exist. I, I think an audit is wholly appropriate and ought to happen. I don't, I'm not sure I understand the what he's trying to prove with the gold thing. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't need to be an investigation. He can They can go down and do their own. Have a look-see. You an betcha. Audit. He has an oversight of responsibility as a member of Congress. He, go on down. Iran's hardline media have called the French First Lady, Carla Brunei, a, quote, prostitute after she expressed strong support for an Iranian woman who was facing death by stoning for adultery. And the, they're saying that the, she's, the, the response is she's a prostitute. If you bring a knife, they bring a gun. Yeah, I, it's uh, pretty concerning. And, and this is, you know, this is, uh, it's an interesting debate because when you get the, the Sharia law individuals who believe that should be the law of the land and it's based on that some of the tenets of Islamic faith, we have to understand that it is, it is horrible to women. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in Saudi Arabia, you have to get a special license from the government to have a, a woman be able to drive a car, and less than 3% are approved. You have to get permission from your husband and the government if you want to get a job outside of the home, and very few are those approved, and most of those are only around uh, children and other women. And so this notion that, that uh, gosh, we have to be so tolerant, we ought to be pretty angry about how half of the population in these countries are degraded uh, and shoved in the back seat. I don't, I don't want to quite understand why we, we all of a sudden think that this is okay because that's uh, their culture. We have never been that way. We've always been for equality. We always stand up for equality. Uh, believe me, I think a lot of problems in those nations could be solved if women were full equal partners in their society. Hmm. Certainly has worked well for us. Six minutes before the hour, Michael Patrick Shields heard all across the state of Michigan. Dale and Ed Moore, are you still on the line there at 888-900-9966? He is not. We could reconnect with him. The word is here he wanted to thank you, which is uh, very nice. The president will give a primetime address tonight on the end of combat operations in Iraq. It'll be an Oval Office speech day at o'clock. I figure he's not going to say mission accomplished. Well, I... If, when he says end of combat operations, he's saying mission. I, I'm not. I'm a little. Well, I'm not confused about about this. I'm a little disappointed in it. This is his numbers are bad. His polling is bad. Uh, so he's going to get up and announce that he has ended the Iraq War just like he promised. And you're going to hear a lot of it. And it's all political posturing, and it's unfortunate. We're going to have 50,000 people, and their mission today is exactly the same as it was last week, six months ago. We got folks who are going on patrol in dangerous areas, trying to bring a little stability. To Iraq. Now, uh, this was always part of the plan on the surge, is to draw down. So what you're seeing is a slow and consistent drawdown. But this announcement that it's the end of combat operations, you do tell that to a wounded soldier who's getting in a firefight next week or tomorrow. I mean, I, I just, it just means that we walk away from the folks who are there, and I think it's wrong. We ought to just, he, listen, I understand he's in some political trouble, but he shouldn't try to make this his political issue. Yeah, I guess how would I feel, how would anybody feel if they were one of the 50,000 left and they see tonight on a, a USO feed that uh, combat operations are over? Yeah, it's all Let's over. Let's go. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to be a paid policeman for Iraq, right? I, I can don't do want that to be home. a paid policeman for Iraq either. And, and the thing is, when they're doing these stability operations, that it, those are still uh, in many parts of the country, not all, because it's gotten a lot better over the last, uh, you know, since the surge began, is that's good. And we, our whole goal was to turn it over, as you remember, turn mm -hmm. it over province by province. That's the way it was laid out. That's exactly what's happening, so we can continue to scale down. But n now to say, well, all combat's over, because I say it is. Well, Mr. President, you've got a young captain and a young sergeant over there who's responsible for a mission and the lives of their soldiers, I think, who deserve better than that. 
Mm. I mean, they're still doing their mission, and we, I don't want the Americans to walk away thinking these folk, the 40,000 people are over there getting suntans in the sand. They're not. Um, you're in the state capitol for a 2-1-1 event with United Way? Yeah, you know, this is, uh, it's, it's a great thing. This, the 2 on one is, uh, it's a program, if you, you have an emergency in your home, that doesn't mean you need the police or the fire, but maybe your money ran out and, your, and so did your food before the end of the month. Uh, it connects you to the charities in the community. So you mm -hmm. dial 211, you go to one place. If you have a finance problem, it, you're, you have a need for your family, it gets you connected. Why I think this is good? It's the best benefit between the private sector and the government. It's, it's we can help coordinate the charities so that one, uh, when you call up, you can get exactly the help that you need, and likely it'll be from a private charity. It's all good stuff. And quicker, too. Thank you very much for taking the time to come down here. Yeah, thanks. Thanks we for having me. Appreciate it. Television viewers. And we'll see you tomorrow on Fox 47. Radio listeners, stay right where you are. We'll take your calls the rest of the way, too. It's Michael Patrick Shields all across Michigan. Just they call me big.